In this video, I will show you how to implement and create character cosmetics for your Unity Steam multiplayer game. I will go over the initial setup, as well as how to get this synced across the network. And as per usual, the source code is available on my Patreon, link down below. Really quickly before we begin, this video is sponsored by Unity, who currently have a spring sale going on. This means you can get hundreds of assets which are up to 70% off. There are lots of things to choose from, so you are definitely going to find something that you like. Not to mention, this is generally a really good time to get assets you want, as, well, they're cheaper. Some of my favourites that I recommend are Feel, an asset for adding game feel and juice to your game. Odin Inspector, which does a bunch of things to make your Unity Inspector feel better and work better. Polygon assets, shapes, and many many more. I will leave a link down below which will bring you to the sale, so that you can take a browse yourself and pick and choose what you want to get. Thank you Unity, and now let's continue. Okay, so the first step is actually setting up your lobby scene. In my case, what I've done is in the canvas, I've created an empty game object, called it Character Cosmetics. Inside of which, I've just made a little background. I've also added an image that I called Current Color. I added two buttons, one called Next Color Button, and the second one called Previous Color Button. And finally, I added a text component that I called Current Color Text. So basically, we'll be able to use the arrows to switch between the different colors for our players. The text at the bottom will update to the color we're currently on, and so will the current color image. So to actually be able to control this entire system, we need to create a new script. So I will press add component and I will call this character cosmetics. Okay, now inside of here we are going to add using unity engine.ui, using Steamworks, and finally using mirror. We will also remove everything that's currently in our script. So we will start with making some variables. The first will be a public integer called current color index, which I will default to zero. I will then make a public material array called player colors. And this will basically hold all of the colors that our player can change into. We'll then make a public image called current color image, which is the one we have in the scene. And finally, a public text variable called current color text. Okay, so those are all the variables we need to make. Now this script will actually only have three functions. The first one will be a void start function, inside of which we want to set up a couple of things. So for this project, I want to actually be able to save our current color that we have selected, so that every time we open up the application, it's still the same color that we previously selected. For the record, this is not necessary, you don't have to do this, however, I think it's a nice feature. So to do this, we will grab our current color index. Okay, so I'm going to make this equal playerprefs.getInt. Now playerprefs is basically just a way of loading and saving variables. We then need the name of our variable. In my case, I will just call it current color index, but you can call it whatever you want. But if it doesn't exist, I will just default it to zero. The two final things we need to do is actually update our image and our text color. So let's do current color image, and we'll make the color of the image equal player colors, and then in here we'll pass in our current color index dot color. And finally we need to update our text, so let's do current color text dot text, and we'll make this equal basically the same thing here, so let's just copy that. But instead of color, we'll access the name. So that is everything in the start method. What we're basically doing is we are loading from player prefs our current color, and if we don't have anything currently saved, we'll just default it to zero. And then we're updating the image and the text. The two final functions we need to create is for our buttons, which is selecting the next color and the previous color. So let's make a public void next color. And I'm going to copy this over, but this time I'm going to call it previous color. Instead of the next color, we'll check if our current color index is smaller than our array, so player colors dot length. And we need to do minus one because arrays start at zero. And if that is the case, we'll make our current index plus plus. So we're increasing it. And then I'm just going to copy this over from the top and paste it here. So that we also update our color image and color text. I will then basically just copy this entire code into previous color. At the top, in here, instead of checking if it's smaller than, we'll check if it's bigger than, but this time zero, as the array starts at zero. And instead of plus plus, we'll do minus minus. The final thing we need to do is actually save these values to player prefs. So let's do player prefs dot set int. And then once again, we need the name. So I'm just going to copy it from the top here. And then the value that we're setting, which in our case will be the current color index. I'm going to copy this line and I'm going to paste it onto previous color as well. And these are both of the functions. This script is now finished, so let's go back into Unity. Inside of Unity, there's a couple of things we want to do. Let's first of all open up Character Cosmetics, and on both of these buttons, I'm going to select both of them. Add a new onClick method, which I will drag in the lobby controller into. Select Character Cosmetics, and for now I'll select Next Color. Then I'll click on Previous Color, and make sure to change it to Previous Color. In the actual script, I will drag in my current color image, and also the text. And we also need to fill this array full of colors, so what I'll do is I'll make a new folder, call it Color, call it Colors, and I'll create new materials with the colors that I want. So these are the different colors that I've created, and I've done this by right-clicking, pressing Create, and then Material. 
And then all I've done is just named them and given them a color. Now it's super important that the naming is correct because the name of this material will appear in our text. So then finally on my lobby controller, I will lock it and I will drag in all of my colors. I can now unlock it and press play. If I scroll through this, you'll notice that I change colors through the array. And now I can flick through this and go through the different colors that are in our array and the text also changes at the bottom. Perfect. Okay, so even though we now have this system, we still need a way of being able to load this color onto our player and then syncing it across. Okay, now the best place I found to do this is on the player object. So if we open up the player object controller script, here we will be doing all of the syncing of our colors. And at the top here, I will make a new sync variable function. So for this, we'll do sync var, then hook equals name of, then the name of our function, which in my case I will call send player color, and I will default it to a public integer called player color. Then at the bottom here, we want to make some functions for this to work. The first function will actually be a public void cmd update player color, inside of which we will pass in a new integer called new value. And then in here, we will call a function called send player color that we referenced in the sync variable. We also want to make this function a command. And instead of here, we need to pass in two values. First of all, an old value and then the new value. So we'll pass in player color and then new value. Right now we're getting an error because this function doesn't exist. So let's make it public void send play color int old value and int new value. And instead of here, we want to first of all check if we are the host. So let's do if server. And we will also check if we are client. So if is client. Okay, so we check if we are the host and if we are the server. One more final thing we want to do is on the if is client check, we want to do another set of parentheses. And we'll check if old value does not equal new value. And make sure to add an and and. The reason we do this check is because we only want to update this value and send it over if the value is different from what it currently is. And we only do this check on the is client because only if you are the client will we be sending the data over. If you are the host, it's basically instantaneous. And this basically means that we can save on some data and we don't have as much of a latency. So instead of the is server, I'll change the player color to equal new value. And inside of here, we want to do basically the same thing. But instead of directly calling it here, we want to call this via a function. The reason we want to do this in a separate function is because sometimes it's buggy if you do it directly in here. So let's make a new function called void update color, which will pass in a integer called message. And instead of here, we will make player color equal message. And we will call this function here, update color, and we'll pass in new value. Okay, so this script is now finished, which means this data will be sent over the server. The final thing we need to do is actually update the player's color on the model itself. So for this, I'll go into my player movement controller script, but feel free to create a new script if you wish. And here we want to define a few variables. The first one will be a public mesh renderer called player mesh. And finally, I will also make a material array called player colors. And at the bottom, I will make a new function, public void player cosmetics setup. And inside of here, I will reference my player mesh. I'll make sure that the player mesh dot material is equal to player colors. And then inside of here, we want to grab our current play color. So to do this, we'll do get component. We'll reference our player object controller, which is the main script we just edited, and we'll grab the player color. That is everything. We just need to make sure we call it. So in the update function where we call set position and where we make the model active, let's also call player cosmetics setup. Okay, let's save this and go back into Unity. And now the final thing we need to do is set up this player object. So let's open up the player movement controller. Let's drag in our player mesh, which in my case is this capsule. And for the player colors, we need to drag in that list of materials we made. So I'm going to lock this, go into colors and drag these colors in. And it's super important that this order of these colors is exactly the same like it is in your lobby on your lobby controller down here. And now if I host a game and I have my second account join, on this account I will select pink and then on this one I will select something else like orange. If we both ready up and I start the game, you'll notice that both of the colors have loaded in, which is perfect. So that is the end of this tutorial. If you want access to this entire project source code, I will leave a link down below to my Patreon, on which you can get access to all of my tutorial projects. Thank you to all of my current Patreons, and make sure to check out the Unity sale that is going on right now. Links to all of that is in the description below. Genuinely guys, go check some stuff out, because there's some awesome assets that you can get on sale right now. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!